I am gonna try to survive 100 days in Ark Survival Evolved, this time on the jungle map, Lost Island. And of course, as always, we have a few objectives for this playthrough. First of all, I have to survive all 100 days without dying. Secondly, I have to take down the Dinopithecus King. And third, as a builder, I wanna do a whole bunch of cool builds in this playthrough. So with all of that said, let's go ahead and let's get into it. We spawned in on the northern beaches of Lost Island for what would be our last journey on Ark Survival Evolved, ahead of the remaster. So of course we did what we always do, we picked up a rock, grabbed out a bush, and took a minute to pick out our first tree for a good old fashioned punchin'. This allowed me to craft up my first pickaxe so I could start gathering some more resources. All right, I guess this rock is unbreakable. Hmm, spend five minutes with my wife, bud. She'll have you broken and crying. All right, this one is unbreakable too. I guess all these rocks are just unbreakable. I am the only one on this island who is just broken down inside. Before long, I was crafting up some spears and my first set of cloth armor. With my new weapons, I began stalking through the bushes, taking out the local wildlife, and harvesting them to get more hide. I continued making my way across the beach, where these pegos jumped me and took my stuff. You son of a Get back here, dude! Eventually, I killed them, getting my belongings back and continuing on my journey. I eventually came across this area of large rocks that looked pretty interesting but it was being guarded by a raptor. At this point though, I had bullas and a slingshot, so I decided to try knocking it out. It eventually broke free and started running, but I would later find it fighting a turtle. I decided to make this a threesome, but the raptor got jealous and ran away. However, it had a change of heart and came back to munch on the turtle's booty. We had to bulla and chase it a few more times, but eventually we got this girl knocked out. Hey, there we go. First tame is down. Just gotta go ahead and shoot away the celebratory rock there. Why am I pulling up my hatchet? I didn't mean to do that. I'm <laughs> gonna chop it up. Oh, it's a level 135. I uh, I didn't even notice that really. I will take that gladly. Nice first tame, noise, noise. So with that down, I set up a nice little fire by the beach to wait for it to tame, and then spent the rest of the night killing stuff for hide and levels. Early into day two, my raptor finished taming, and we named it Velocity as we do with all of our first raptors. With Velocity now following us, I decided to explore the area of large rocks and cleared out some local pests. There was a fairy wandering around nearby, but I chose to ignore this obvious danger and continued exploring. This resulted in me finding a level 90 Parasaur, who I bullied, quickly trapped, and then smacked in the face till it took a nap. With the Parasaur taming, I started setting up a little tent base here in the rocks. Then the Parasaur finished taming, and we named this one Duck Lips. And after quickly crafting up some hide armor, I took our Parasaur out to gather up berries in mass. One of the mods I'm using for this playthrough is S+, mainly for this tool right here, the S+, transfer tool. It allows me to quickly transfer an even number of meat and berries to all of these mortar and pestles I have placed, saving me a bunch of time from doing this manually. Later in the day, I got a saddle on Velocity and decided to take him out on a little scouting mission. Oh, a 150 Iguanodon. All right, I might have to come back for you once I have arrows. Are these metal rocks right here? These definitely look like metal rocks. All right, well, <laughs> they're not giving much metal, but I mean, they, they've got to be metal rocks, right? Like, look at them. It is a stone pick, so, you know, maybe it's, we're not going to get much, but we'll keep at it. Back at base, I dropped down a forge, got enough metal for a smithy, and crafted up my first metal tool. And then I went back out to gather some more metal. Day three, I crafted up my first crossbow and a bunch of trank arrows, and then tracked down that 150 Iguanodon and got it knocked out. I decided to go ahead and throw some spikes around this fella to keep him safe. You're gonna be safe, right? Right? While that was taming, I decided to head up the mountain to do some scouting and found some crystal. I used this to quickly craft up one of my quality of life mods, the awesome spyglass. This spyglass will show us a lot more details, such as point distribution and how much food something needs for taming. While up here on the mountain, I found a 135 raptor, so I knocked it out and then killed this Ovis for mutton, which tamed our raptor up much faster and we named it Steel. I attempted to tame a Snomacrops, but this wild raptor had other plans. Steel dealt with him and then I found a level 95, so I knocked it out and tamed it. As the day was ending, I returned home to find this. What are those damage numbers? What is going on over here? Hold on. Leave those guys there. I don't want everybody to come with me. I don't need stuff to get killed. Oh, shoot. Holy crap. The fairy is over here and it is attacking my Iguanodon. Oh my gosh. I don't want to get involved because like if I attack it and it turns, it's going to kill me. It's just going to come over here and destroy my raptor. It is a low level. Uh, come on, Iguanodon. You got this. You should be able to kill that thing. 
Come on, buddy. Oh, nope, there goes our Guanadon. Well, that was a 150 Iguanodon killed by a 25 Theory. All right, I don't have a choice. I gotta kill this thing. I gotta, I gotta put up a fight, because... All right, yeah, attack the spikes. Attack the spikes. Wow. Wow. We definitely could have saved our Iguanodon. I am a coward, and I'm not proud of it. Next day, I went out searching for a Pteranodon, but found this 145 Carno instead. It took a while, but eventually I got it knocked out. A little while later, I spotted this 130 Pteranodon flying above the trees, and after tracking it down in the woods, we got it knocked out as well. As I often do, I completely forgot to name my new raptor, but we went ahead and named it Evergreen. And then I lit up a row of campfires so I could start getting some charcoal, and started making up some gunpowder so I could eventually craft a rifle and some bullets later in the night. Apparently while I was at base crafting stuff, something came along and killed my Pteranodon as it's no longer on the tracker. I know it wasn't going to wake up, I had just pumped it up with narcotics, so something must have killed it. I went out searching for a replacement but found another high level raptor instead and went ahead and knocked it out. Later that night the Carno finished taming so I named it Stumpy and we popped a saddle on her to take her home. And then at the end of the day I came over to find that the raptor had finished taming as well. On the morning of day 6 I began taming the Sonomacrops that was near my base. It took a whole lot of patience, but eventually, it was ready for its last feed. Oh, come on in now, buddy. Come here. Holy crap, dude. This has been such a pain in the butt. It's flown across the ocean. I've had to swim over to the island to feed it again, and it swam back over here. But it's all been worth it. We now have a Sonoma Crops. We can now start kind of flying around. We're kind of airborne now. We just need to come up with a name for you. What are we going to name you, little buddy? I don't know what to name one of these things. I don't really have a, a, a good name for this. Oh, crap. I have an XP boost from taming that. Okay, you know what? We can name you later, bud. We uh, we got to get to doing stuff. We got to craft up some stuff and, I don't know, we'll do narcotics, I guess. I don't <laughs> wasn't prepared for this at all. I guess I'm just going to mass craft narcotics. So I spent the next chunk of time crafting up as many narcotics as I could to take advantage of that XP boost. I spent the rest of this day trying to find another high-level Pteranodon and finally found one but it was flying around all the way out here over the Atlantic Ocean. But I would not let that deter me. I hatched a plan to try scaring the Pteranodon back to the land. All right, bud, you're gonna hold still here for me. There we got one on it. All right, is it going? Oh, it's actually going towards the land. Oh my gosh, if this works, this will be absolutely hilarious. Is it gonna try to land on that rock? No, it's gonna keep going. All right, we're gonna land on this rock. It is already trying to fly back, so we gotta we gotta get our crossbow back out here. Is it okay? It's looking good on Torpor. We can go ahead and get the crossbow back out and shoot it again. Hopefully, it'll keep going back towards the land. Can we hit the shot? There we go, brother. Oh, it is heading back to the land. Look at it go. Yes. This dude is really starting to upset me. He's trying to fly back over to the water. He made it all the way to the land almost, and now he's trying to fly back to the water. Get over to the land. Right. Oh, I missed the shot. Come on. There we go. Oh my gosh. Yes. Go, 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 go. Keep flying that way. Eventually it would land over here on the island and we immediately bullet it and got it knocked out. It finished taming up early into day seven and then while I was out gathering chitin for its saddle, I spotted a 150 raptor, so I got it down as well. Back at base, I named the raptor we tamed a few nights ago Night Sister because it's a female. We tamed it at night, and I've been watching a lot of Star Wars lately. I named our Sonoma Crops Hops because it hopped when I leveled it up. And I named our Pteranodon Pelagornis because it really wants to be one. A little bit later, our new raptor finished taming, and we named this one Charizard. And then I headed out with Pelagornis to look for a permanent base location. I knew I wanted to live somewhere in the jungle area of the map because of the build theme I'm going with. And eventually, I found this little waterfall cave. Ooh, what is this right here? This is like, is this a cave? Is this like an actual cave? Or is this just like somewhere you can go inside of? This looks kind of cool. There's a bunch of like hanging vines. We got a few different entrances, it looks like. We got a waterfall in here. This is pretty dope, yo. It's not the most spacious area, I'm not gonna lie. It's, it's not the most spacious, but this is a cool little area. Oh shoot! Oh my gosh, that ant! That ant scared me way more than it should have. I don't know, this is a cool area. This might be it. I might I might have to check this out a little bit more. This may be our base location. 
I decided that would be our permanent base location, so I headed back to my temporary base to begin prepping all of my stuff to move out there. And then, disaster struck. Oh gosh, that's an Alpha Carno down there! Holy crap! Oh, it's so close to my base! Why is that here? Oh my gosh, what level is it? A 140 Alpha Carno. Holy crap, I... I have to like bait this thing away. I can't kill that. There's, I can, I'm not even confident I could kill a fairy, let alone that thing. Holy buttholes. Dude, it's just trotting around outside my base. Like one wrong move and everything's dead. This is going to be the shortest 100 days ever. All right, we got to bait this thing away. We got to draw it out to the water. Hey, buddy. Did you see me? <laughs> did you see me? I don't think he saw me. Hey, man, pay attention to me. Oh, he's trying to get over our spikes. No, he's trying to get over our spikes. No, he is getting over our spikes. Oh, he's attacking. All right, everybody attack. Everybody fight back, fight back. Come on, guys. Oh, they're driving him out. Oh, gosh. I hope that wasn't damage numbers on my guys. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Come on, team. Let's go, team. Oh, they're actually kind of doing some damage to him. Come on, guys. You got this. I believe in you. Oh, okay. Well, there goes Charizard. It was our brand new. Oh, there's Evergreen. Gone. Oh, gosh. Steel's gone. No. Oh, no, there goes Duck Lips. Oh, Velocity and Night Sister and Stumpy. Yep, that's and I'm getting attacked by ants. Yep, that is my entire squad just wiped by an Alpha Carno. Just like that. Seven days of work down the drain. So with almost everything I had to this point now lost, I began slowly chipping away at this Alpha Carno's health because it's just basically blocking my base. We got it killed eventually, and on the bright side, it did give Pelagornis 28 levels as well as 6 levels for myself. I was going to be stuck here for a little bit longer, so I spent some time rebuilding my defenses, and then luck was on our side as we found not one, but two high level raptors to start rebuilding our team. Next, I started tranking this Stego to replace our Parasaur, but I got too eager and hit it one extra time. Yes, even with the awesome Spyglass. I know, you don't gotta tell me, I suck. But on the bright side, by the end of the night, both of our raptors had finished taming and I got them both back to base. The next day I went out searching for an Arjun because I have the saddle unlocked and it will make taming things much easier. And holy crap, after a little bit of searching, I found a level 150. I'm beginning to think that the levels on this map are just better than other maps. Unlike my last few playthroughs, I was smart enough to bring gates with me for this, so I quickly threw together your generic gate trap, and then I somehow lost it in all of the trees. I think it actually might have gotten killed, but luckily I did find a level 140 and got it trapped and tranked out. I went back to tame it the following morning, and well... What the heck is this? Why is this dude in the frickin' ground? Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh, I can't access it. I cannot access it. I just straight up got arced. Oh my gosh, dude. What a waste. Are you kidding me? And dude is straight up snoring loud as it possibly can. Like, as if to mock me. He's just snoring at the top of his lungs through the dirt. I headed over to the next mountain over to find another Argentavis. And instead, I spotted a level 150 Ankylosaurus. It would be really great if I had my Argent right now, which I should. So I could pick that thing up and take it out of here. But, the search for an Argent continued, and as luck would have it, I literally rounded the top of this mountain and spotted another level 150 Argent right around the mountain here. I don't know what it is, folks, but I've had amazingly good luck on this map with levels. So I threw together this little makeshift trap with stuff I had that I was planning on using for a Rex, and then I managed to bait the Argent all the way down to the beach, get it trapped in there, and knocked it out. And then once it finished taming, I took it back up the mountain and rescued that level 150 Ankylosaurus from some scorpions. I got the Ankylosaurus back to base and knocked it out in this little drop trap. I then went off to these rivers where I had seen some beaver dams in search of a beaver, but had no luck. Even though I found the dams, which I looted for pace, there just were no beavers around. So instead, I started killing off some Hesperonis to harvest them for organic polymer, which I would then use to craft up a few cryopods in a nearby drop. Later that day, I crafted up a harpoon launcher. This, combined with the net projectiles, will make taming certain creatures much easier. And then I headed back over to what will be my new base location to begin blocking off all of the entrances. For those of you who might want to use this spot, you'll see a map on your screen with the map cords on it. One bad part about this base location is the giant hole in the ceiling. 
So I spent a good chunk of the beginning of day 12 completely blocking off these cliffs so nothing can fall into my base. I then spent the rest of the day looking for new tames with no luck, but the Ankylosaurus did finish taming, so like all of my other tames, I cryo it up to keep it safe in a box. The following day, I was out looking for something to get me around the map a little bit faster, but I instead spotted a level 140 Rex. So I quickly gathered up the materials I would need to craft up the old, reliable Captain Fat Dog Rex trap. A link to his tutorial video will be in the description below. But I wasn't really planning on tranking a Rex today, and eventually my crossbow broke. So I had to craft up a regular bow to finish knocking it out. I ended up building a little fob so I could smell up some more metal and repair my bow. And then while the Rex was taming, I found the one and only Griffin in this whole area. So I quickly hit it with a net gun, and then tried to build a little improvised trap around it. But I forgot to place the back ceiling, and it got away. The next morning, I swung over to a nearby island to grab our wreck some lamb chops and use them to quickly get it tamed up. Hopefully this will keep us safe and we won't have any more Alpha Carno incidents. I still needed a replacement for my Parasaur and for that I found two level 140 trikes just hanging out together. I only needed one though, so the other one had to go and then I lured the other one over to the secluded island so I could net it and trank it where it would be nice and safe. While we had a moment, I named my Arjun Archangel because it looks very angelic. I named the raptors Bonnie and Clyde since they are a pair, and then I named our Ankylosaurus, one of our old reliable names, Pincushion. Day 15, I crafted up some scissors, made up some red and black dye, and got ourselves looking, well, like ourselves. Another mod I'm using is the stylus table, which allows me to make these little potions. One will grow my mohawk out to full length, and the other one will keep my beard from growing anymore. The rest of the day, I searched around the snow until I found a high level Megaloceros. So of course, I took it back to my base to knock it out in our drop trap, and then took my newly tamed trike out to gather some berries. I still had the need for speed, so I again went out searching for something that could get us around this massive map a little bit faster, this time to the snow biome in search of a Managarmor. And after spending almost the entire day killing off low levels, I found myself a level 130. I had to get a few things from base for taming it, and while I was there, our deer had finished taming, so I named it Elliot. And then spent the rest of the night gathering materials and crafting gates for a trap. I tracked the Managarmor down into the woods, netted it, and built a trap to hold it. But I absolutely failed with this trap, and Buddy hopped right on out. Seems to be a reoccurring trend with this playthrough. I gotta say, this thing might be my most hated tame ever. The amount of times it has lost aggro for me to jump away and attack random things was beginning to get very frustrating. I did eventually get it netted again, and this time decided to just race against the clock, trying to get it knocked out before it broke free of the net. Oh, hey, dude, what are you doing, man? This iguanodon's just attacking it. Yeah, that's right, man. Get out of here. This is mine. Oh man, this is actually gonna be really close. Here we go. Come on. Oh, we got one. It should go down. It should go down. We got we got enough shots on it, I think. Where did it go though? Where did it go? Oh my gosh, it just dropped out of the air like a rock. So the iguanodon is still trying to get over there, dude. It's not happening, man. It's not happening. All right, mana armor down. Holy crap! I think we should build some spikes around it. I went ahead and put those spikes around it just in case, and then went back to base and cryoed up all of my tames and began moving in to my permanent base location. What is it about this game that creatures just, like, they're drawn to things being knocked out? Look at this Bronto. Dude is literally just getting all up and involved with my... <laughs> Why does he go away, man? All right, we got some pride meat for it. We'll go ahead and feed it up, and it should tame here in any second. As long as this Bronto doesn't, like, actually damage it. I don't know if it can, but it's doing everything in its power to try to hurt our guy here. It's just standing on top of him. Bro, go away. All right, a few more feeds here, and we got it. Like, one or two more. All right, there we go, brother. Even with a Bronto standing on your back, you still tamed out. Good job. Back at base, I named our Managarmor Frozone and decided to take it out for a little test run. While I was out, I came upon this area that has Maywings and one of them was a level 135. So I decided to knock it out for taming. It didn't take very long for it to finish taming, but I wasn't actually planning on taming anything and didn't bring any extra cryos. So I had to leave it on this rock and just pray that it stays safe. But don't worry, I would return later in the day and pick it up. Back at base, I named our Maywing 2%. 
and then headed out to look for a doid. I first checked the volcano with no luck, so I climbed up high and used our maywing to glide over to the desert, and man, there is something so satisfying about traveling on this thing. I did eventually find a level 135 and got it knocked out, then headed over to where some beavers spawn and found a level 145, so I decided to carry it to the desert to tame them together. Oh no, dude, don't tell me the doid is in the ground. Oh, it's totally in the ground. Are you kidding me? It's like way down in the ground. Oh my, I, I can't even be mad right now. Like, this is already twice that I've had this happen. All right, well, we're gonna have to let that thing wake up and uh, hopefully, you know, make its way free of that eventually. So yeah, I was gonna have to wait for that doid to completely wake up and make its way free of those rocks. But on the positive side, I did get the beaver knocked out. The doe had finally woke up, and after I left render distance, it was finally able to free itself from the rock. So I began tranking it out again, but because it had already taken so much damage, this was going to be a pain in the bum. Shooting it while it's in the ball is doing absolutely nothing, but it's like, it's keeping- Oh god, there's damage numbers over here! What is going on? What the heck is this? Oh, 2%! No! Terrorbird, get off of him! Get off a of 2%! Oh my gosh, it's so bloody. It had 366 health left. I left it on passive. I just left it over there. 2%? You almost spoiled my guy. Get it? It's a milk joke. It took literally the entire day letting the doe it unball, shooting it a few times, rinse, repeat, but we eventually got it down. I spent almost all of day 21 just hanging around the desert waiting on these guys to tame. I did find a red drop, however I'm not a high enough level yet to be able to open it. But the beaver had finished taming so I headed back and cryoed it up, and then went to explore the dunes of the desert. While I was out there I killed a few mantis, and since I had the organic polymer, I decided to head back to base and make use of it. After a quick crystal run with pincushion, I got a fabricator crafted up and placed it down in my base. I then made myself my first set of flak armor, as well as a shotgun, some shells, and some trank darts. Back over in the desert, this yellow drop gave me an immediate upgrade to the flak helmet I had just crafted, and a snake tried eating my booty. After waiting around the rest of the day, the dode was finally done, and on the way home, I grabbed a red drop that gave me an immediate upgrade to the flak legs I had just crafted, as well as a rex saddle. This was huge though, because I'm not a high enough level to craft a rex saddle yet. The next day I placed down some more forges, I'm gonna need a lot of metal to eventually make the industrial forge. I then started working on clearing out my base so I could have as much room as possible to build, as well as gathering the other resources I would need to start on my first build. Before I got started though, I thought it would be a good idea to have something taming while I built, so I headed out to find another Rex, and that is when I spotted this. Oh, that is an Alpha Rex, a 135 with 66k health. Yeah, we can't kill that. I mean, it would be amazing! If we could kill that, it would give us a good chunk of levels. But there is no way that we can kill this thing, right? Like, there's no way. Is that an Alpha Raptor over here? There is an Alpha Raptor, yep, and an Alpha Rex. It's just Alpha City over in this area. Alright, I mean, an Alpha Raptor, I think maybe we could take this out? Like, it's just a Raptor, right? 140, okay. 20k health, I mean, that's, that's a big chunk, but I mean... It does get frozen, so I, was, I mean, if we can freeze it, then we could probably peck away at it, right? I took care of that raptor fairly easily, but unfortunately it gave me nothing really good in the loot department, but I did at least get one level from it. Now it was time to take on the big daddy. I began slowly chipping away at its health with my ice beam attack, and luckily it was too preoccupied with trying to eat to really give a crap about me. I was but a cold breeze on its rough leathery hide. Oh my gosh, it's so close! Hey, don't turn run away! Get back here! Oh, we're doing zeros. We're doing zeros. We gotta get closer. Dude, it's so close. Oh, oh, it's attacking us. Oh, gosh. We can just fight it. Just fight it. Just brute force it. Oh, dude, he's already like half health. I don't know if we could. I don't know if we would do it. It might kill us. Oh, no, we're stuck. No, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, you got this. You got this, Frozone. Come on, Frozone. Oh, my gosh. There we go. Holy crap. I thought we were gonna lose our Frozone, buddy old pal. All right, Alpha Rex down, yeah, eat it. Eat it, buddy. No loot. Wow, that's, that's absurd. Yeah, no loot on him either. That is unacceptable. We just scared a horse. Two levels, all right, we'll go ahead and pump Fortitude. 
Of course, I had to upgrade Hops' helmet game with our new trike bone helmet. Oh my gosh, there's Rex, nope, okay. There are two alphas over there. There's one hiding in those rocks. Dude, that is crazy, there's two more alphas. This area is just loaded with them. I'm gonna kill off everything, we're gonna clear out this area, we got more alphas to kill. Oh my gosh, there's another one! There's an alpha raptor right here! There are three alphas over here. This is insanity. I killed that first alpha raptor and it surprisingly gave me a decent amount of gear but the second raptor and the carno both gave me diddly squat. I then spent the entire day searching for another rex, and as it was coming to an end, we found a max level. I got the rex trapped and set up a little campfire to keep me from freezing to death while I knocked it out, but someone else had other plans. Oh my gosh, that's a saber tooth. Holy crap. Oh my gosh. It just came running in and destroyed our campfire. Dude said, no fires please, this is a forest and Frozone is doing absolutely nothing about it. All right, we're gonna have to deal with that Sabretooth if we wanna knock out this Rex. Kitty, 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 kitty. All right, oh, we missed, great. Come on, but that's not, the Frozone is just jumping around, all right. Sabretooth dealt with, holy crap. Yeah, there, there you go, Frozone, have a snack, buddy. You did so much to deserve it. After healing up for a little bit, we got her down without any further interruptions. And then back at my base, I gave my armor and Hops' helmet a little paint job, and I think we look mighty fine if I do say so myself. I was feeling greedy, so I spent the rest of the day out searching for more high-level wrecks, but had no luck. So it was time to grab some mutton and tame the 150 up. I went back to base to grab some more supplies, and while I was there, I named our Doid Rollout and our Beaver Daggett. And then again, I spent an entire day just out searching for a Rex, killing off any low levels that I found. Oh, wait, hold on. There was a Rex back there. Oh, baby. Another 150. Dude, you have got to be kidding me. And it's a female. We need a male. <laughs> like, we need to be able to start breeding soon. I came prepared with the stuff for a trap, so we quickly got this girl pinned in and knocked out. All right, just a little bit more here. We'll give it the old pause. Take this thing down. There we go. Frozone got a level. I got a level, more importantly. Oh, there's a Rex. I can't see what level it is. It's got a lot of points. Oh, it's a 145. Holy crap. All right, we'll give that level to Frozone. Okay, we have to get that Rex also. It's a male. We have to get that. You're the one that I want. You are the one I want. Ooh, 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 honey. The one that I want. You are the one I want. Ooh, 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 honey. The one that I want. You are the one I want. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And it <clears throat> it's down. All right. High level Rex, male. That's down, yep. Um, all right, let's tame this thing up so we can start breeding. After getting that Rex down, I decided to spend the rest of the day trying to get to level 80. I found two Alpha Raptors traveling together and after killing them both, we got the last level we needed and we're now able to unlock the Industrial Forge. The first of our two Rexes finished taming soon after and then I noticed an Ice Wyvern nearby and killed it before heading into its lair to see about an egg. Unfortunately, the highest level one I found was only a level 95. I briefly poked my head into the normal wyvern trench as well before chickening out and going to pick up our other rex so we could take it back to base and get breeding going. Day 28 I started crafting building pieces for my first build, but because I was building the foundation underwater it took a lot of trial and error to get it in the right spot. Essentially for this one we will have an entire level that is underwater and not really being used. It took basically the whole day but we got the foundation complete, now I needed to do a bunch more gathering to build up the rest of it. So day 29 we did exactly that, and yes, that is right, I am farming metal rocks with my doid. I have plenty of metal spawns around me and they give more stone per rock than a normal node. Obviously I wouldn't do this on a server with other people. But after a day full of crafting up all of the pieces I would need, I finally had everything ready to get started on our first real build.
All right, so there you have it. This is the first build of our playthrough, and this is going to be our workshop where we'll have our forge, all of our crafting stuff, as well as our storage. And hopefully you can tell we're sort of going for that Mayan or Aztec style of build for this playthrough. That is why I wanted to live in the jungles of Lost Island. This is something I have on my channel. It's a different size. I think I might have scaled it up a little bit. But I do have something similar to this on my channel that I did when Lost Island came out. But everything going forward from here will be completely original builds for this playthrough. Now that we had a workshop, I needed to fill it out, which meant going to the snow biome to get oil for crafting our industrial forge. I also needed polymer, so I crafted up a chainsaw and headed over to the desert to chop up some mantis. While I was over here, I tried fighting a death worm, but apparently my ice beam attack was not very effective. I would have thought the death worm was a ground type, but I guess not. Back at base the following morning, I got the forge crafted up and placed down. I then got to work on getting a new fabricator down, as well as a smithy, and my first vault. If I wanted more vaults, I was going to need some more metal, so we did another run with pincushion. Another great thing about the transfer tool is being able to completely transfer pincushion's inventory over to the forge with just two clicks. So with that metal cooking, I decided to head to the redwoods in search of a good Danapithecus that I can use for caves. I ended up finding a level 150 and got it to follow me out to the grasslands, where taming it would be a little bit safer. But along the way, the whole killing its tribe mechanic got messed up, and I couldn't tame it. Then this giant flying lobster tried ambushing me, so we had to kill it. To solve my problem, I went back to the outskirts of the Redwood and found another Dinopithecus, got it to follow me out, and reunited it with the level 150. After killing off that one, the level 150 was ready to let us tame her, and we started doing so by apparently putting some mutton up her bum. As a fog rolled in over the arc, we finished taming our new monkey, and with another XP boost, quickly headed out in search of some alphas to kill. But of course, when you need them, you can't find them. So I had to settle for just killing Rex, and then, later that night after the XP boost had worn off, I find a level 140 Alpha Carno. I stayed out a little longer just killing things off until I hit level 82 and could unlock the chemistry bench. And then I hit up a few dams for paste I would need to craft it. I was also short on electronics, so I got a bunch of those going, and before long, we had ourselves a chem bench crafting and placed it down. So I went ahead and placed down a generator right next to it, the good thing about things like the S Plus Chem Bench is you can run them off of electricity alone. You don't need that weird requirement for both electricity and gasoline. Plus, with the S Plus Generator, there's an option to hide all of those ugly cables. And then, before the night was over, I got a few more vaults down as well. The next morning we made the upgrade to the Industrial Grill, headed back out to the desert to get more organic polymer, and then came to this spot along one of the rivers where you can find these mushrooms underwater that give fungal wood. The reason I wanted some was to use it for crafting up these fish baskets. You see, the lake we live in is filled with piranhas and they keep respawning. So I used the old cage trap technique to get a few in some fish baskets and get them tamed. I ended up taming three in total and then set them on aggressive and let them go to work on keeping our lake clean. Next, I headed back out for some more oil and while I was out, I spotted this level 145 UD. I'll have to come back for this later though. I returned to my base only to find my piranhas losing a fight to some wilds, and then my rexes decided to get involved, and I've just decided that maybe it would be best to just avoid falling in the water. The oil was for crafting up a grinder because you all have pointed out to me that I could be getting a lot of resources from grinding up saddles instead of just tossing them away. I then began replacing my spike walls with something a little more fortified, and then ended the day by going back out for that UD. Oddly enough, you can net one, which it just seems like you wouldn't be able to because they're too big, but we got it down. I was, however, very concerned because it was already almost completely meshed through this ground. Oh, yeah. There's no way. No way. Dude. Oh, no. We can, we can access the inventory. What the heck? We're tickling its feet. All right. That thing is meshed, like, completely into the ground. I'm really nervous if we leave the area and come back, which we have to to feed it, it's gonna go all the way down and just sink to the bottom of the world. Oh, let me get it, there we go, without, nope. I'm trying to get a good shot here without the thing popping up, without the name, there we go. That's a good picture right there, all right. Got a new picture for Feet Finders. I spent most of the next day continuing to work on building up some walls and trying to make them look a little bit better. Then it was time to see if our UD was in fact still tameable or meshed through the ground. Luckily, we could feed it and got it tamed up. I spent the entire next day building the walls, gathering more resources, and building the walls. With the walls finished, I decided it was safe enough to let out all of our tames, and I realized I needed to do some naming. I named the Dinopithecus Rafriki because I thought it was funny. I named the Yudi Atreyu after one of my favorite metal bands growing up, and I named the Triceratops Princess because it's a girl and my daughter's favorite dinosaur. 
I then went to get more paste from the beaver dams, and this happened. Oh my god, what was that? What was that? Oh, it's a Trudon. It's a Trudon. We're poisoned. Oh, it's... Oh, no, don't fall in the water, dude. What am I doing? Where did Frozone go? Oh my gosh. All right, we got to get away from this thing. We're just going to fly up. There's two of them. Where is Frozone at, man? This guy has some serious issues. Let's try to land on this rock. Oh my gosh, I just overshot it. The heck? My controls didn't work. That wasn't me, people. Okay, this was me. This part's me. This is me. I'm missing. Okay. All right. There they are. Dude, where did Frozone go? Come here, you. Oh, that did barely any damage. All right, well, we are literally just stranded here in the swamp-ish area. Frozone just absolutely bailed on us. We're on a rock with two Trudons under us. What the heck, man? Well, I had to fly all the way back to base using only hops, but luckily we've been pumping stamina. I spent forever flying around on Archangel, whistling all follow, before I finally found Frozone chilling down by this waterfall. He would remain in his cryo for punishment. Eventually, I want to get a garden going, which means I'll also need a Fiomia for what we call fecal labor. This one was right outside my base, so I went ahead and got it. I also tamed a Moss Chops as we may need their eggs later on, and named him Hef Daddy. Once the Fiomia finished taming, we named it Taco Bell, and then I spent the rest of the night crafting pieces for my next build. After gathering some more stone with rollout, I finished crafting all the pieces for our next build. Unfortunately, I didn't notice my OBS was having some encoding issues during this build, and the footage was way too choppy to even use. But this build is basically just a small platform for keeping all of our harvesting tames next to our workshop. Hef Daddy would need some ladies to keep him company, so we went out and tamed five more moss chops. And then back at base, I named them Holly, Kendra, Bridget, Carissa, and Christina, and got them making some eggs with old Hef, so we'd have them for kibble. If I was going to have a garden, I would need some dung beetles to turn the poop we get from Taco Bell into fertilizer. So I headed out to the desert and tamed up four of them. I also placed down an oil pump that I got out of a purple drop so it can passively collect oil for us. And then I decided to extend out our little dino platform some so it can hold a few more of our tames. Alright, so there we go. We have a little spot now where we can park all of our moss chops and we also threw our trike up there to give it somewhere to hang out as well. Next, it was time to build up a little greenhouse. I was forced to build it out here on this ledge because this is the only spot that the game considers getting sun for the greenhouse effect here in our little cave. I decided to use the S plus greenhouse parts for this build because you can actually change their appearance to look like any structure. So since we're using glass for the greenhouse and it doesn't really fit our theme of our builds, I was able to switch that to stone, but we're still getting the 300% greenhouse effect. With our greenhouse now built, we loaded up Taco Bell with some stem berries and started force feeding her, which would cause her to poop uncontrollably. I then got out my dung beetles, loaded them up with the poop, so they will start making fertilizer, and hooked them up to this S plus hitching post, which allows me to set them on wander without them actually moving. And of course, we named them the only four acceptable names. Next, I took out Princess to gather seeds for our crop plots, as well as to test out her thatch gathering, and I almost got her killed. Oh crap, we're over the edge. Oh, there's a sucker down here. Alright, we're gonna jump off, so it doesn't take fall damage. You got this, girl. You can take- Oh! Where did that raptor just come from? Oh, the raptor thinks it's a Capro. Alright, we got this, girl. Come on. The raptor ain't got nothing on us. It can't even get up to us. This Sarko is driving us into a wall. We got this, girl. Come on. You got it. Come on, Sarko's almost down. There goes the raptor. Alright, Sarko's down. Oh, there's piranhas. We just need to get out of this water, and then I think we're safe. Ooh, she's half health now. Come on. Alright, there we go. We'll go ahead and gather these berries, because we're down here. Why not? I gotta say, on a map like this, where there are so many trees packed in tightly together, the trike might actually be better than the deer for thatch. You guys might be right on that. Back at base, I got our crops planted, loaded them up with some poop for the time being, and got some water running to them and spent the rest of the day working on another small little build that would be a platform for Taco Bell to do her dirty work. I spotted another high level Rex when I was out taming the moss chops, so I made up some more trank darts and headed out to see if she was still there. Thankfully, she was still hanging around but was fighting a whole herd of Brontos, so we teamed up to take out the Brontos, and then I got her trapped and knocked her out. I brought enough pillars to make two traps, so I went out looking for another one, and towards the end of the day, found a level 145 female at this lake. We've seen a lot of wrecks at this spot, sometimes three at a time, and I was beginning to wonder if this was another one of those guaranteed wreck spawns like the spot on Scorched Earth. The next day I started working on crafting pieces for my next build, which means standing around encumbered the whole day while things craft. Then our wrecks were ready to be tamed, so we went back to get the first one. On the way to the second one, we had to break the ankles of this Ichthyornis, 
and then got the second one tamed up as well. Oh, there's another Rex right here. That spawned really close to ours. Oh my gosh, a 140 female. What the heck is with this area, man? This is insane. We don't even have all the darts we need. We'll probably have to use arrows to get this thing down. We would end up having to use our crossbow, but we got the Rex down, and I'm just glad that I keep this thing on me as a backup. The next day, I got the foundation for our next build laid out, and then spent the entire day just crafting pieces, and just as the day was ending, I had everything I would need for the next build. But first, we had to go feed our Rex that we had already gotten down, and then I decided to stick around the area and test my theory that this was a guaranteed Rex spawn point. I went ahead and killed off a few low-level ones, left render and returned, and sure enough, it would seem like Rex are guaranteed to spawn here. So I decided to farm the spawn and eventually another level 130 female spawned in. I rushed back to base to make up some more darts and we got her knocked out. Now it's time to get started on our next build. All right, so this is my next build, and honestly, this is probably not my proudest build. The idea I had in my head didn't really come out how I planned, but it's just meant to be basically a platform for hatching eggs, and we need to get started on those, so we'll probably rebuild this later on with something a little bit better looking, but I just wanted to get something up so we could start hatching eggs. But before we start hatching those eggs, our newest Rex was ready to tame, so we went and did that, and then I crafted up some S Plus Aircons. These are nice because you only need like four of them to hatch anything in the game instead of the crazy amount of normal air cons you would need for certain eggs. I got those powered up and it was time to start hatching some babies. And with that many babies hatching, I needed to do an extra large meat run to get ready. The next day I hatched all of the babies and I basically kept all of the females out to raise as well as one male who had better stats than his dad. The rest of the males went in cryos as I planned on killing them later for levels. And while I do have access to the S Plus Nanny that can auto feed and imprint on our babies, I felt like that was a little too cheap, so I just stuck around base, tidying up and naming all of our wrecks based on their stats because I completely forgot that the Maywing can feed babies. And then once they were holding down enough food, I still had to wait for their first imprint, so I just did a quick wood gathering trip with Daggett. Day 50 and we are halfway home and I would spend the majority of this day doing the last thing I wanted to do on this playthrough, searching for an otter. I first checked the redwood lakes and rivers because I assumed that was where they would spawn. It wasn't until using our handy dandy Google that I found out they only spawn in one spot in the swamp. I did find this level 130 but decided it would be better to bring my Arjun back so I could take it back to my base for taming. Upon my return the level 130 was nowhere to be found and I'm assuming something must have come along and killed it. But I did find this level 50 female so I grabbed it with Archangel's beak and we took her home. Back at base we took full advantage of our fish pond, Archangel held the otter nice and still for us, and before long she was tamed and I named her Mrs. Scarf. I even made sure to get her some extra fish meat so this one doesn't starve. Day 52 I spent the entire day just crafting, crafting, crafting for another build. And just as it churned day 53 I had everything ready to get started.
All right, so that is our next build done. And this one is going to be basically our personal house for the playthrough. Now, it might be a little bit big to be a one-person house, but you know what? It is our last playthrough on Ark Survival Evolved before the upgrade. So we might as well spoil ourselves with a nice big house for ourselves. So sticks with the theme pretty well, I think. Try to continue going with the same theme we've been doing for all of our other builds. Next, I started getting some preserving bins down in the house. That way we can use them if we need to make jerky. The babies were quickly going through the meat I had already gathered, so I went out on another meat run and spotted yet another high level Rex, which of course we knocked out. I then headed back to the desert for more polymer and found another red drop, which we can now open. Wasn't quite what I was looking for, but it's not bad. On the way back home, I did a quick Ovis killing and got the Rex all tamed up. The following day, nothing too crazy happened. I started off by getting a few fridges down in my new house and then spent the rest of the day just stocking up on meat to fill our new fridges for feeding our babies. This would continue all of day 56 as well and then towards the end of the day, another high level Rex spawned and we knocked it out. We got her tamed the following day and then continued killing everything we could find as we pushed towards level 89. Eventually we got the level which meant we could unlock the industrial cooker. Back at base, I got it crafted and placed down in our house. I tamed the moss chops to use their eggs for superior kibble, which I would use to tame a deodon. But I also have a ton of spare rex eggs I could use for exceptional kibble, and making focal chili is a lot quicker than waiting on jerky. So I took Princess out to gather berries, made up a bunch of focal chili, and then used it to make some exceptional kibble, and used the leftover tinto berries to make some med brews. I had seen a high level data on around where we've been finding all of the wrecks, so I went back and grabbed it with Archangel. I would have to take a few pit stops to heal up as the data was not too happy about its kidnapping, but eventually I dropped it in this little trap I made and Taco Bell wanted to go pig v pig with it. Alright Taco Bell, calm down buddy. You would definitely- alright we gotta get Taco Bell out of here. Taco Bell's gonna get killed, you would definitely lose that fight girl. Alright, one more shot should do it and this old piggy will be down. Probably just shoot it right in the butt. <laughs> just put a needle in its booty and it went down. All right. Oh, you know what? Its food is actually like really low. I guess maybe like because it had the heal while I was carrying it over here and I didn't actually let it eat things. It like starved itself. So we might actually be able to like feed this thing right away and get it tamed up. Let's uh, let's go grab some kibble real quick and see if we can't instant tame this thing. All right. Yep. There we go. Instant tamed. That's awesome. Um. We're gonna go ahead and call this one med pack, because I don't know. I don't have anything better. Sweet, that was actually like super easy to get it tamed once we got it back here. And as the day was ending, our Rex babies were all grown up. At this rate, I might actually be able to try breeding some to get good stats for the boss fight. So I immediately started hatching the eggs I've gotten since the last hatching, and then started crafting some polymer because I am sick of going to the desert for it. With that polymer, I traveled to the blue obelisk to make up more cryos and made a quick pit stop with pincushion to get more obsidian so I could craft a butt ton more. With a bunch of new cryopods made up, I finished hatching the next batch of eggs and again kept only the females out to raise with the exception of one male who had good stats. And then just stuck close to base, restocking on resources. Stuck at base with the new babies, I started crafting up pieces for my next build and before long, I was ready to get started building. All right, so there we go. This is our next build. Well, actually, hold on. Let me, uh, how rude of me. Let me clean up after myself. Let me get this ladder. But yeah, this is our next build. This is basically going to be where we keep all of our artifacts and hopefully the flag and trophy at the end. It's just kind of like a little platform here in the middle of our lake. In between our next imprint, I headed to the desert to take on what is known as the Desert Labyrinth. 
This maze of traps and turns is home to several red drops that we can get some great gear from. Unfortunately, we had a pretty crap haul. Alright, baby, here's our first red drop of the labyrinth. What do you got for me, baby? A ascending normal bow and a tappy saddle. Alright, yellow drop. Was it worth 2% getting pinged up? Okay, hey, purple chainsaw. That's not bad. It's not amazing. It's not what we're looking for, but you know what? We'll take it. And we're not even going to pick up that thorny saddle because I'm never going to tame one, so. Alright. Get here. Oh, gosh, dude, 2%. Oh, my gosh. 2%. I'm so sorry. There's a red drop here somewhere, buddy. Okay, it's in here. There it is. Alright, dude, 2% is getting beat up by Trank Arrows. Look at his torpor, it's just going up. Oh my gosh. All right, what do we get? Nice, Journeyman Bronto platform saddle, and is that? Yep, there we go, just a primitive shield. Don't need either of those. So yeah, unfortunately I left my first run at the Desert Labyrinth with really no good loot outside of that purple chainsaw. The next day I decided to go out for my first artifact in this sunken ship, but there were too many bad guys around for me to feel confident about getting it, so for now I just headed home but not before killing this giant whale for some prime fish meat, just in case our babies want some for imprinting. And then, as I was returning to base, my wife and daughter got home, and this adorable scene unfolded. Hi. Hi. Mommy, can I have a popsicle? Why not? I can't. Why not? I said no. Mommy said no? Yeah. Why? Mm. Look. See daddy's dinosaurs? What is that? Triceratops! That's a triceratops? Yeah. What's this one? Okay. Oh, no That's daddy's favorite. Who's is this one? Whose favorite is triceratops? Mm. Who? Mine. That's yours? <laughs> mm hmm. What? Look, there's baby T Rex. You see the little baby T-Rex? Yeah. They're little. Those are big. Well, they're, they're big, but they're not as big as those ones. See how big those ones over there are? Yeah. And see how little these ones are? Mm. They're babies. Like you. I decided to tame an Ichthyosaurus. That way I could just quickly swoop in and grab the artifact. But these Megalodons wouldn't leave us alone, so instead I knocked out this level 135, and then we rushed back to base to make up its saddle because our Rex also needed an imprint. And then we headed back into the depths to get the artifact. This is the artifact of the Devourer, and it is located roughly right here on your map, inside of this sunken ship. It's actually pretty easy to get if you have a water tame to get you down here, you just have to watch out for any bad guys in the area, swim over to this spot, and break these wooden planks with either a pickaxe or a hatchet. And voila, our first artifact is waiting right there. I brought Mrs. Scarf with me, so we parked our butts on this small island, gave her the one we were already carrying, and waited around for another one. This would be a mistake. So Mrs. Scarf is dead, as you can see. Um, what had happened was, I went upstairs to get some chips, you know, as the name would suggest, I was getting kind of hungry, wanted a snack, and day 64 had just ended, so basically I stopped my recording, because I only, like, you know, I stop it at the end of a day and start a new one. Hadn't started day 65 yet, because I was just going upstairs, and we were just sitting here waiting for the artifact, and I walked back down the stairs as I was seeing my death message for Mrs. Scarf. It got killed by a Megalodon, and then my Megalodon killed it. Um, there's our bag right there, actually. Let's go ahead and grab the artifact. So yeah, I guess a wild Megalodon came along and attacked our Megalodon, and I must have left Mrs. Scarf on neutral because she felt like getting involved with the fight, jumped in the water, and got herself killed. So, living up to the name, if you watched my Monarchy playthrough, I had a, a habit for getting otters killed, or killing them myself, but uh, that's besides the point. Uh, we're living up to the name from the monarchy, and now we have to find our Megalodon, because, wait, there, actually, that might be it right there. That's a Megalodon, and it's not moving, so it's probably ours. Yeah, there we go. All right, so we got our Megalodon at least, and we're going to have to get another otter. That's awesome. So I wasn't able to get the second artifact, but we could still go ahead and place this first one on its pedestal. And since our Megalodon served us well, I named it after the artifact it helped us retrieve, and then I would spend the rest of the day out looking for a replacement otter. These are like so hard to find, man. Like it's just piranhas and salmon everywhere. Oh, they're aggro with me. Oh gosh, that Capra's attacking that. Oh my gosh! Dude, no, get off of me! 
Oh, why am I pulling my weapon, my gun under? Oh my gosh! All right, all right, neck on, neck on. There we go. All right, sweet. Oh my gosh! I panicked there for a second. I was trying to trank arrow it off of me. I'm gonna attack my piranhas, dude. That Capro wasn't even going after me. He was going after that dang pig and just happened to hit me. I don't know if he changed his mind that last second and was like, "No, I'm gonna take that guy out instead." But <laughs> that was actually like I needed. I needed that laugh. I actually, I kind of needed that. It's been a long day of looking at very small creatures in the lakes. I needed that laugh. After searching almost half of day 66, I finally found another otter. I took this one just over to another spot in the swamp where I had seen some pretty big fish, got it tamed up, and named it Mr. Scarf. And then went back out for our second artifact of the Devourer. Technically, I don't need two of them, but I want to be able to have one always on display. The following day, we would take on our first actual cave, this one being the Tumash Cave, which holds the artifact of the hunter and is located roughly right here on your map. Now, the reason I wanted a Dinopithecus for caving is because for some reason, things in caves will just blatantly ignore them. I don't know if it's an intended feature, but I decided to go against that and bully these scorpions anyways. I just do not trust that these guys are not going to end up attacking me. Like, where did that second one just come from? What the heck, did you just fall from the ceiling? Like, I just, I just feel like if I go past them though, like, They'll end up spitting me in the back. That dude is climbing up the wall, and we are not able to shoot him. We're getting backed up to the choke point here. All right, there's one. That killed. Him. Oh gosh, he went under us. Oh no, he's behind us. He's behind us. Oh, buddy. I knew that was gonna happen. As soon as he got behind us, I knew he was gonna break our stuff. Eventually, we made our way through the cave and got the first artifact of the hunter, and then just hung around until another one spawned in. On my way back out, I got preoccupied by this interesting-looking hole. But eventually we made it back to base and put our second artifact on its pedestal. A good portion of the next day was spent crafting for another build before heading out for another artifact run. This hole drops us into what is called the Twisted Vine, which holds the artifact of the pack. And it is located roughly right here on your map. Sorry girl, but that big old thick booty ain't fitting through here, so we're gonna go on foot for a little bit here. Alright, go ahead and crow her up and then... Uh, Get this shoddy out and we'll just head in on foot. All right, this is all very clear. There's nothing actually in this. Oh, there's a blue drop over here. All right, I'm gonna get this blue drop. I don't know what's gonna be in it, but I mean, wait a minute, here's spiders. Yep, oh dude, they were waiting to ambush me. They were waiting to ambush me, man. They were on that blue drop, waiting for me to come around the corner. That is a 275, man. I was wondering why I was taking so many shots. All right, let's take this one out too. Oh, it webbed us. Oh, it webbed us. Oh, oh my gosh, 280. All right, so we got high levels in this cave. All right, I think we're clear now. Let's go see what this blue drop had for us. Is there, no, there's another one. Oh my gosh. Where are you at, dude? Where are you at, dude? He's here somewhere. I don't see him. He's like, is he, oh no, there's, okay, there's his web. All right, we're gonna get this. Parasaur saddle. Awesome. Perfect. Definitely what I wanted. There he is right there. Okay. Take him out real quick. 280 again. Oh, missed me, bud. All right. <laughs> it just got tossed over there. All right. Spiders cleared out. Let's move on to this next section. We had to deal with a few more spiders, but right around the corner was our first artifact of the pack. And of course, we waited around for a second one and then put one up for display. I was starting to have way too many wrecks for our little cave, so I used some spikes to section off a little area up above where we could move all of them. And then I started tearing down the hatchery we had built because I'm just not too happy with it and want to build something different. But first, our newest wrecks were now fully grown, so we moved them out of the way as well, so that we could get started on our next build.
All right, so there you have it. That is our replacement hatchery. It's still a pretty straightforward build, but I think it fits the theme a little bit better. I had unlocked the egg incubator, but that would require a lot more electronics, as well as some more metal and more cementing paste. So we spent all of day 71 gathering those. By the next morning, we had three of them crafted and placed inside of our new hatchery, and I started loading up all our eggs into the incubators. Currently, my best stats are a male with 45 health and 31 melee. I might need to try to find a little bit higher melee before the boss battle. I started hatching all of the eggs and again cryoed the males and only kept the females out to raise. This time I even managed to remember the Maywing's ability to feed babies. Day 73, I was determined to find a Rex with a better melee stat, but after a day of searching, I gave up and instead found a high level Snow Owl to knock out and tame up. We might need one of these later on. And back at base, we named our new Snow Owl Basic White Guy Tattoo. And before you get your feathers rustled and try to come for me, just know that I have an owl tattoo as well. So. Back on the Rex search on day 74, I ended up spotting a level 130, but it only had 16 points in melee. I did go ahead and knock it out, but it's going to take a miracle for this thing to get a good roll. My search continued and later in the day I found a level 140, but it also only had 19 points in melee. We're really crossing our fingers on these two. The 140 had finished taming the next day and we actually got really lucky. 35 points in melee isn't amazing, but it is a slight improvement from what we have. The 130 finished as well and yeah, not so lucky. So we got the new 35 melee female breeding with our 45 health male. It pooped out an egg and we headed downstairs to see its stats. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. Come on, baby. Come on. Not that one. This one. This is the one that's fertilized. All right, here we go. Here's the moment of truth, everybody. Oh, it's a male. 45 health. 35 melee. Oh, baby. What freaking luck. Oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> Like, we we had to get this. this was, we had, like, one chance to get this, and we got it. Dude, I gotta, I need to do some scratch-offs or something. So, of course, I got the egg hatched and raising immediately. Day 76, we were back to doing caves, and this time we were taking on what is known as the Shula Falls Cave, which holds the artifact of the strong and is located roughly right here on your map behind this waterfall. Oh, snap, are those Ravagers? I did not know those were on this map. All right, whoa. Hold up, are those... Yep, that's an aberrant... Yep, aberrant scorpions and aberrant raptors. Um, okay, well, I don't know if they'll aggro to me, but if they do, would those raptors be able to pin me? Like, I know on aberration, obviously, we know very well from aberration that they can pin you, but can aberrant raptors pin you, or is it just the map? Uh, I'm going to try to not make those mad. I eventually made it to the artifact, but decided to first clear out the room in case I were to fall down when I dismount. The last thing I want to have happen is one of these raptors jump all over me because I slip off the side of this little ledge. Before too long, we had the room mostly cleared out and we're grabbing our first artifact of the strong. I had to get back to base to do some imprinting and once I was there, I put our artifact on its display and then headed back out later that night to grab a second one. Next cave we'd be taking on is known as the Shula Hollow. It holds the artifact of the Clever and is located roughly right here on your map. Literally in a pond right outside of our base, there's a little underwater entrance that we have to go through. All right, here we go, Shula Hollows, we're coming through. Or we're not coming through because we're freaky's big old fat booty can't get in, can we back in? Nope, all right, well, <laughs> good start. We're gonna have to cry over freaky right off the bat. All right, so we have to cryo Rafriki again because we can't fit through here. That dung beetle is scaring the crap out of me. Oh gosh, there is something here. Oh my, God. it hit us right as we cryoed Rafriki. All right, we're just gonna run around here, get our shotgun out. What is it? Okay, some scorpions. Oh my gosh, dude. They were in league. They were in league with the dung beetle. The dung beetle distracted us and the scorpions came and attacked us. I am, that was embarrassing. I should have been, should have had all my ammo in there. All right, there's one. Let's take out this one. All right, there we go, dude. I'm telling you, that dung beetle, that dung beetle set us up, man. It scared us, and then I was like, oh, it's good. It's just the dung beetle, and then I got attacked. All right, is there anything else in here? Anybody else? Anybody else in here making noise? Oh, my gosh, that dung beetle, dude. It's scaring the crap out of me. Dude. All right, it looks like it's clear. You know what? This man right here, this man right here is scaring the crap out of me. You got to go, buddy. I am not sorry about that. 
After fighting my way into the heart of the spider's lair and killing off all of the inhabitants, we got ourselves the Artifact of the Clever. While I was waiting around for another artifact to spawn, I found this little upgrade for my long neck rifle. But for some reason, another artifact never did respawn, so I headed back to base to do imprinting, and then put the one that we had already gotten on display. I then spent the remainder of the day looking for Dinopithecus to tame, and got one tamed before the day was over. I then spent the entire next day out taming four more Dinopithecus, and I gotta say, I was glad to have that done. So now that we had our troop of Dinopithecus, we obviously had a build that we needed to get done. So as you could probably guess, this next build is a little tower for keeping all of the Dinopithecus that we just tamed. But we did still need to name them, so we ended up going with Mankey, Primeape, Mojo Jojo, Donkey Kong, and Diddy Kong. And then our last batch of female Rex finished raising, so now all we have left is that male and one more female that we hatched from the other female that we just tamed. So while those were still raising, I again headed back to the Loot Labyrinth, and again, I didn't really get anything I was looking for, although I did find an Ascendant Pike blueprint. And towards the end of the day, I took a few of my better wrecks into the dunes to test them against death worms. Granted, with some help from Frozone, but still looking pretty good and getting some good levels. While in the desert, I decided to go ahead and do our next cave, and this one is called the Sunset Cave. It contains the artifact of the Brute and is located roughly right here on your map. Again, the Dinopithecus makes this basically a cakewalk, but I'm a fighter, so we fought our way through. And with a few quick hops, we now have the artifact of the Brute. I made another quick stop on the way home to see about some loot, and did manage to find a few drops had respawned, and one had this flak chest BP. And then, back at base, we put up our artifact, and then grinded down some stuff I've gathered from drops. On day 84, I headed over to the volcano area for our next cave, and on the outskirts of the cave entrance, I was greeted by two basilisks. Luckily, Frozone made short work of them. So this next cave is called, um, Zonolo? Zonolo Depths, I think is how you say it. But it holds the artifact of the immune and is located roughly right here on your map. As I made my way into the cave, I found there were basically no enemies. I don't know if it's just bugged or something, but it kind of spoiled my plan. You see, my plan was to make it down here to this spot, and then we could just fly up here to the artifact using our Sonomacrobs hops avoiding everything, but oh well, we've got the artifact of the immune. On my way back to base, I found this Alpha Rex that was stuck and decided to free it. And then back at base, we placed our new artifact and got the last imprint on our male Rex. Early the next morning, our high statted Rex had finished raising and it was time for him and the 36 female Rex to have some fun. Buddy is gonna be sore in the morning. So what I basically did was just walk him down our line of Rex, letting him breed with a few at a time, and I would check the eggs of the last batch while the current group was mating. Here is how all of that went. Alright, here we go, first batch. Remember, we're trying to get as many as we can that have 45 health and 35 melee. Here we go. Alright, there's one. Right off the bat, we got a 45 health, 35 melee. Nope, that one doesn't have the health. That one doesn't have the melee. That one doesn't have the melee. Okay, our first four... We only got one. All right, we're shooting at 25% right now. All right, batch number two, here we go. First one is a nope. Second one, yes. Okay, 45, 35. Go ahead and grab number two out. All right, third slot, nope. Fourth slot, nope. Fifth slot, what was that? Yes, fifth slot is a good one. All right, third batch, we got four more. First one, good. All right, slot number one, thank you very much. You're amazing, slot number two. Oh, baby, slot number two. Thank you very much. That's two for two. Slot number three is good to go. Oh, my gosh, three for three. I'm getting a rush here. 
Slot number four, no. Oh my gosh, dude, I'm, I'm becoming addicted to gambling right now. That's what's happening, folks. In the end, I had 15 total eggs that had 45 health and 35 melee on them. None of them were triplets or twins, so that gives us a total of 16 wrecks with those good stats. We'll just have to use two of our other, you know, relatively strong wrecks to fill in those last two. With 15 baby wrecks raising, can you guess what I did on day 86? If you said meat run, you're right. Next, I decided to try taming up a few more Sonoma crops so we can make them a little pen. As you can imagine, this was a very annoying day. Oh my god, dude, please just come down to me. Oh, here it comes. All right. Oh, it's ready to eat. It just flew right past me. I want to cry. Eventually, I would get my first one tamed up. All right, that one's just sitting there. It looks like that one's coming. Oh, yeah, here it goes. All right. There you go, little lady. Have you a snack? Oh, two of them landed. Hey, oh, there's a third one. I feel so loved right now. Oh my gosh. You know what? Maybe I was wrong about you guys. I got two more tamed up before the end of the day, followed by one more the next morning before it was time to head home. Back at base, I started crafting building pieces, did some more gathering, and soon enough, I was ready to get started on their pen. All right, so obviously you know this build is for our Sonoma crops. So again, just trying to stick with our theme, just a small little pen with a little sort of dropped in area that can kind of be like a nest for them. I of course needed to name them and we went with Momo, Emolga, Banshee, and Red Bull. With another of the three unique tames checked off, I decided to head back over for another shot at some loot. And holy crap, we actually got something. All right. Oh, wait a minute, that's a wreck saddle. Oh, Journeyman Rex Saddle BP. Holy crap. This is the first 100 days that I've actually gotten a Rex Saddle BP. Oh my gosh, dude. I'm... I'm happy. Oh, there's another one right there. You have a better Rex Saddle for me, huh? Huh? Better one? Oh, snap. Mastercraft Compound Bow Blueprint. All right. I mean, I would have rather just had the bow, but you know what? We'll get that too. That'll, uh, that'll, be, that'll come in handy, maybe. We might need it. So I immediately returned to base and started crafting as many wreck saddles as I could. Day 90 started with a meat run, then I worked on leveling our good statted male wrecks, and finally took pincushion to get the metal for those saddles. I of course would also need a bunch of fiber for the wreck saddles, so I went out and gathered that, and then I started making up some curry that we're going to use later on, before heading back over the desert to gather polymer I would need for making the bow. Back at base, I made up the last bit of polymer I would need the old fashioned way, and crafted our Mastercraft compound bow followed by as many arrows as I could afford. With our new bow, I headed to the edge of the dunes to make my attempt at taming an Amargosaurus. I figured this would be the easiest spot to tame them since most of the bad guys over here are relatively spread out. I don't really care about the level, I just want to tame one to say I did it. So I drank up some curry and after chasing this thing around, I finally got my temperature synced with it. Let the hunt begin. All right, brother, well you won't kill you. You won't take out that there thorn and dragon. All right, he's getting him. Oh, we got the good old shot him. Oh, don't get in the fire. Put one more right there. Oh, he took it out. All right, brother. Good fight. What did that do? Let's see. Oh, God. 3%. Oh, my goodness. We got to find something different. Hey, man. We want to go kill, buddy. Hold on there, pal. Don't be getting so far ahead. Let me come help you out with that layer, Arthur. Plural. Oh, gosh. That was a big chunk. Hey, where you going, brother? Oh, it's one of the mantis. Oh, it's, oh, we missed. It's doing some damage. Oh, we got to get in here. We got to hit it. Oh, he's losing tame and effectiveness. There we go. How, what do you have there, brother? Man, I would think the damage on the Arthro would really help it a lot more because do, it does so much damage, but I guess not. All right, over here, brother. Let's go get you some chicken for dinner. Oh, he's ready to eat them some kibble. There we go. Got you the chicken. Get you some kibble. 
We get you that kibble with good old real chicken meat in it. You've got to stop getting so far ahead, buddy. You got a pig on your butt. I'll come in here like a guardian angel flying around shooting you this pig. Hold on, let me take care of this there bug. All right, buddy, just just keep it still. A pig's chasing you right up the butt. Just keep it. It's just it's just chasing. It's not even hitting it. <laughs> Look at it. This is perfect. Just hold it. Just keep going in circles, man. Just keep going in circles. It's gonna work. We're gonna get so much damage. Oh my gosh, dude, this is perfect. This is the strat, folks. This is the strat. How much did that do? Oh my gosh, that actually did a decent amount. This is the strat. This might be it. We're getting pretty close. This might be it. He's gonna put some damage on. Oh gosh, he hit me. Holy crap. There we go. A Margosaurus tamed. That was not that bad. Honestly, like, that was not as bad as people have made it out to be. I don't know. Maybe I got lucky, but that was actually kind of fun. Chasing them around in the desert, killing things. Back at base, I started working on the stuff I would need to build our new friend a little pen, and then we got started on it. So yeah, this is sort of like a little parking bay for our Marg. Building it in the water makes it sort of look like it's on stilts, like we kind of lost a little bit of the detail I did around the bottom, but that's okay. It still kind of fits the theme we're going with. And my idea was kind of you would build like a handful of these sort of clustered together for all of your Margs. And I had to name this thing Bane of Ross Clark for our buddy and fellow monarch Ross, who he has a very hate-hate relationship with taming these things. And then I still had a few more artifacts to get, so I went over to what is called the Boscar Cave, which holds the artifact of the Skylord and is located roughly right here on your map at the bottom of this waterfall. I completely missed the churn to get further into the cave and ended up popping out on another exit, but after backtracking, I found my way in. Oh my gosh, dude. What the heck, man? Yo. <laughs> Alright, oh, there it is. Don't enter the puddles, apparently. I've been staring at the screen for like four or five hours. It's like 2 a.m. right now, and I walk through a puddle and get blinded. That's exactly what I needed. Oh, snap, there's the artifact. Okay, well, that's, uh, I was not actually aware I was coming up on it. I was just putzing around this cave and just stumbled into it, so... You know what? We'll go ahead and take it, though. No complaints coming from me. Artifact of the Skylord down. There happened to be another cave pretty close by, so this is the Lost Ark Grotto which holds the artifact of the cunning and is located roughly right here on your map. I don't know what would happen if we fall down here. Oh, no, we would be fine. We can get back up. All right, here we go. Oh my gosh. I didn't realize it could jump that far. All right, so you're supposed to go like through the ship. There are so many bats. Holy crap. If they decide to turn on me, but we're going over. We're going to go over the ship. Here we go. Oh my gosh. Ah, okay. We're good. Oh, there it is. The artifact is right over there. Are you guys gonna let me through here? There's two scorpions here. You gonna let me squeeze past you? No, you're not gonna let me squeeze past you? All right, we're in a hurry, you know. Like, I need to I need to get back to base. We've got stuff to do. We're gonna, I don't wanna make that jump. I don't wanna try it. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go down here, and then I'm gonna get off the monkey and use my, uh, use old hops. I don't think anything will come after us down here. Yeah, we'll just use hops and we'll just fly over there. Here we go. Got the bow out just in case. Oh yeah, easy peasy. There we go, baby. Two more artifacts to go and we got them all. And back at base, we ended the night by getting our final imprints on all of our boss wrecks. 
and then placing the artifacts. I still had two more artifacts to get to say I collected them all, so in this lake is the entrance to the Gloom Grove Temple, which holds both the artifact of the Devious and Massive, and is located roughly right here on your map. So to do this one, we've got some scuba gear on. There are piranhas in this lake, but hopefully we can just outswim them. I'm gonna go ahead and spray some bug spray right now because there can be some nasties when you come out from the water. Oh yeah, there's the piranhas. They just swam right past us. Yep, there's another one. Oh, okay, all right, let's just go. We're, we can outrun them, we can outrun them, we're good. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. Yeah, we're good, we're good. There's the, entry, there's the uh, exit from the water right there, I should say. Is there any bugs? Uh, it looks like it's kind of clear. Looks like it's actually kind of clear. We got some pearls here, but I don't see any, uh, any, oh no, there's an Arthur up there. Okay, so yeah, good thing we wore the bug spray. Go ahead and put our normal gear back on and let's get to it. All right, we made it to the entrance of the kind of, you know, underground labyrinth portion of this cave. Now there are pressure plates on the ground, you see one right there, that we definitely want to avoid. So we brought hops, and basically what we're gonna try to do is just stay up. We're just gonna float with hops, try to stay up above the ground and not touch any of these pressure plates because we don't want to uh, trigger any of these traps. So let's go ahead and we're just gonna float our way through here. It's actually pretty easy. We're just kinda floating right along the ceiling. Just keep staying up. Oh wait, these, these doors are gonna these doors might be a little tricky. We have to kind of duck down under them. Okay. Oh, now we're stuck. We got to drop. Oh, there's pressure plates. Okay. We got to like fall down under this doorway. All right. There we go. All right. We're just going to keep floating like this and we'll make it there eventually. These bats are definitely in the way. Like, I feel like we might be able to sneak past them, but I like, I don't, I don't want to risk like bopping them in the head and them, them not liking that very much. We're going to kill them. All right. Here we go. Oh, okay. God. Okay. There's one down. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, no, he's beating us up. He's beating us up. He's beating us up. I can't get a shot. All right, shotgun time. Oh, how have we not gotten rabies? Wow. We did not get rabies through all of that. Okay, lucky us. Come on, hops. We're almost there, I think. Yep, this is it right here. There's our first artifact, so we have to go into this room. And then behind these barrels, there will be a button that opens that door. There we go. Press the button. Head on in. There's our first artifact. It's not going to shut on us, is it? Oh, all right, get out of here. All right, Artifact of the Devious acquired. We got one more a little bit deeper in that we got to get. We got the first one. Oh, there's our second artifact. So there should be a button on one of these posts over here. It's that one right next to that trap button. So we got to avoid that and push this button right here. Can we get it? Can we get it? Can we get it? Can we get it without touching that? There we go. All right, and then we'll just fly up and go over there through the door once it's opened up for us. And we have our second artifact of this cave and our final artifact of the playthrough. Back at base, I placed my last two artifacts on their display. We now have all 11 artifacts on this map. And then I started saddling up all of my newly raised boss Rexes. So this entire playthrough, I have been saving every baby Rex with the intent of killing them to quickly level my boss Rex. Well, that would work great if we were playing with PvP enabled, but I have PvE on because cryo timers are dumb when you're playing solo, and it feels kind of like cheating to turn on PvP now. So instead, we would be leveling our wrecks the old-fashioned way by killing things. My first plan was to just farm deathworms, which would have worked great, but they simply stopped spawning after like two. So I spent the next three days just basically killing anything I could find to level up my wrecks. Eventually I got them all leveled to a minimum of 16k health and 500% melee damage and then started letting old medpack heal them up. Unlike the other bosses I've done on other maps, even the gamma on this map requires tributes, so I had to go kill some Sarkos, Titanoboas, and Theries, and some Aloes the following morning. I then returned to base with everything I would need and decided I still had a little bit of time until it was technically day 100, so we could go ahead and get one last build done. So after crafting up the pieces we would need, I got to work.
This final build is to give all of our lost teams from this playthrough a proper resting place, minus the piranhas because I forgot about them till I was editing. So starting down here on the left, we have No Name Iguanodon because we didn't even get to name it before it died. It uh, got killed right, right away. We have Charizard, Evergreen, Steel, Duck Lips, Velocity, Night Sister, Stumpy, and uh, Mrs. Scarf. This is probably the most tames I've lost in one of my 100 days, but let's make sure their sacrifice was not for nothing. So the time had come, we had everything we would need for the fight, and it was time to say one last farewell to our base in case things go bad. I'm actually really proud of what we built here. Didn't think we'd have the space to get so many builds up, and it honestly feels like a little village. All right, we're doing it. We're going, fighting the Gamma, Dinopithecus King. Let's do this, folks. I'm actually feeling pretty confident about this one. We've got some good leveled up Rexes. Everything is in order. I've got a, a good strategy, I think, to do this one. Um, Yudi and Deodon are ignoring whistles. Deodon's following one of the wrecks. Everybody is ready for the fight. And I just realized that I never named the wrecks with all of your name suggestions. Well, that just means we have to survive this. There is no option. I promise we're going to name them afterwards. We're going to defeat this thing. Let's go. Let's go do it. All right. Here we go. We're going to go ahead and enable passive healing on med pack here. Uh, I need to gamma down. I gammaed up in the snow there, and it is way too bright. All right, where is our UD? Where is Atreyu at? Oh, he's over here. Wow. Like, literally tail was wagging in my face. All right. Jump on our UD, and then just we're going to have every all these wrecks follow us into the arena. And we're going to go take down a big old monkey. Come on, everybody. Let's go this way. Are they following? Alright, yeah, everybody's following. Alright, let's go. Come on, guys. You just gotta let them, gotta let them kind of work their way out. Alright, so as we come into the main arena, you see the monkey. He's over there up on that cliff. Everybody's still following us. Nobody's getting stuck. So the plan is I'm gonna bring all of my Rex over here to the right underneath this cave so that he can't use his jump attack where he jumps up and flies away and stuff and throws things at us. He'll basically just come into this cave and he'll get stuck under here with our Rex and he'll fight us head to head and we'll wipe him out. Hopefully pretty easily. So we're going to bring all of... Oh my gosh, some of them are getting stuck. We're going to get those guys unstuck, and then we're going to bring them all over here, and then we're going to go draw him out and bring him over here. All right. Let it rip. I missed. That must have been a miss, right? That surely was a miss. Can I shoot him with a shotgun? Oh, yeah, you can just shotgun him from here. Okay. All right, buddy, come on. Is he coming? I don't know if he's coming or not. <laughs> oh, there goes some poop. We're getting poop thrown out by flying monkeys. Oh my gosh. All right, he hasn't even hit us yet. I was I was actually kind of worried he would hit us and we wouldn't be able to get over here. Oh, there he hit us. Okay. Oh, is he over? Is he coming? Don't tell me they're like patched this or something. No, here he comes. All right, yeah, he's making his way. He's making his way downtown. Wait, I'm going to wait to whistle on him until he's like actually over here. Oh, he's throwing poop. Is that coming at us? That is coming at us. Oh my gosh, dude. Don't worry about me. All right, attack him, guys. Attack him. All right, attack, attack, attack. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. They're attacking. Oh my gosh, all right. Come on, guys. Wipe him out. Wipe him out. Let's go ahead and just keep courage roaring them. Dude, they're, they're doing a decent amount so far. They're taking him down pretty quick. Come on, squad. Come on, squad. Here come the Amargs. We got monkeys riding Amargs. We got monkeys getting carried by Sinos. Or Sinos. Sinos, yes, yeah, Sinos. That's how you would say that. Come on, guys. Dude, they've already got him at, like... A third of his health. They're already wiping him down to a third of his health. They are taking him out, man. Gamma might have been too easy. Maybe we, maybe we should have done beta to start off, or even maybe even just alpha. They are just wiping him like it's nothing. Already down to half health. We're getting the inside of our UD. Yeah, this is the strategy. This is definitely it. You bring him in this cave, let him get surrounded by some wrecks, and then there's not really much he can do. He just kind of starts getting beat up. He can't jump away. He can't run. It's, it's a little cheesy, I'll admit. It's a little bit of a cheesy method, but you know what? You gotta be smart. You gotta do these master strats. Already on my duty. He's getting... We're not losing anything. We're gonna kill him without losing anything. That is crazy. I, I bred these wrecks up. Figured I needed some, like, super mega strong wrecks, and they just wiped him out. There it is. Just wiped him out like it was nothing. Oh my gosh. We probably should have done at least beta, if not alpha. All right. We didn't die this time. We survived. We did it. We didn't die to, to the boss this time. 
So as promised, once we got back to base, I named all of the wrecks with the names that you all suggested, and we went with Garchomp, Gyro, Little Trouble, Kiwi, YI Otter, Ripjaw, Tiny Tim, Tina, Chomparella, Chewit, Boomer, Greg, Kingslayer, Pine Apple, Farewell, Barney, Winchester, and Yoshi. And so with that, that is going to be the end of our 100 days on Lost Island. We had a few goals at the start of this video and we managed to achieve all of them. We survived all 100 days without dying. We built some pretty cool stuff, I think. I mean, I, I like the stuff I built. Hopefully you guys thought there were some pretty cool and good builds, I hope. And of course, we took down the Dinopithecus King. So everyone, I hope you enjoyed this 100 days video on Lost Island. If you did, before you leave, do me a favor and hit that like button. Leave a comment down below on what your favorite part of the video was and share the video around with your friends. And if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe for future 100 days videos on ASA. But that's all I've got, folks. I just once again want to tell you all thank you so much for being here today, checking out the video. And until next time, keep it crispy.